is over. It's over anyway. I killed Kerry, and I killed her baby too. I was ordered to take you to Sun Hill. Well, that's all right, because Sun Hill's where we're going. Right through the front door. Who do you sleep at night? I don't. I'm covered in petrol. Get everyone out of it. So, Leela, you go and check transport availability. Tony, I want as many officers down here as you can round up. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What happened? I pulled up outside the nick and all hell broke loose. It's like a scene from Beirut out there. Have you seen Jim? No, look, don't worry. I'm sure he'll be all right. Give me the keys. I'll see if I'm quiet in this lockdown. Thanks. Still breathing. The front car door collapsed. He must have been behind me. I managed to get him free. He took a few steps and then he passed out. All right, well, now get yourself checked out. No, I'm fine, Mark. That's not a request. You could have been breathing in all sorts. You've put yourself at risk to save Smithy. Now let's make sure you've not damaged yourself in the process. Go on. Twenty past now. I'm on the station platform. I, I dare say you've been waylaid, love. Look, I expect I'll see you here shortly. All right. Is it anyone can see ID? 
remember I was in BIU, I couldn't get in the corridors, they were all full of smoke. Oh, well, Jim's about ready to evacuate customers. Right, we need vehicles to take the prisoners away. Can you organise the drivers? Oh, oh Phil! I want you to speak to the emergency warden and make sure this area is clear for the emergency vehicles, all right? Oh. What's the latest on the head count? Well, most of uniform are present. The three of them are going to St. Hughes, including Smithy. Two of our support staff are still missing. Marilyn Chambers and Margaret Barnes. We haven't got a clue on CID. I'll brief the station officer, make him aware there may be people trapped in the building. Oh. the sergeant's corridor and the explosion went off. All I can think of was you. Yeah, look, I really need some help getting prisoners out of the cells, all right? Yeah, sure. What about my brother? Somebody else is dealing with him. Now, do you want to get out? Do you want to see what a turkey feels like at Christmas? I don't eat meat. You can get the idea. Step back. Slow down. I'm not staying in here. I'll borrow your cuffs. I already used mine. Me too. Look, you ain't handcuffing me, man. Place is burning down. He won't be any trouble, will you, lads? What's the hold up? Let's get them out of here. We'll cuff them later. That's the last one. Good. Hold up. Don't drunk with this all. It's his room. He's out of burning the face. Hey, I'm dropping. Wait, Jack. You wait your turn like everyone else. Right, that's enough. We are going to leave here in an orderly fashion. If we all stay calm, we will get out in one piece. Right, Tony, you lead them out. I'm going to get the custody records. Okay, come on, let's go. I set up an article and should keep the sights here on the journalists to be. Who would you put? I'd keep Miss Dunbar out. Oh, don't remind me. Two in every vehicle, bar three away. Go on. What have I told you about playing with matches, Ali? Problem with my brother, eh? He doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Daddy on, Gus. I'm not sure they would enjoy your company. All right, Roger. Yeah, what are we going to do with Tiny Tim here? We transport him with everybody else. Then I'll be unloading them piece by piece. All right, shove him in the arrest van. Come on, mate. Oh, Come on, mate. This is some private time. transport. I reckon you push my right. run. Calm down, sir. Hey, bring that out. Stop that. Get him. Get him. Get off. Get him. All right, get to the back. Get out. Tiny Tim, get off. Hey! What's going on? Two prisoners nicked the car. Oh, a man cuffed. We didn't have time to cuff them all, Mum. Oh, this is marvellous. Well, I'm sorry, but what do we know about them? Well, that's the Pagan Brothers, Mum. They were nicked for credit card fraud. Well, don't just stand there. Get another car and get off them. Go move. But he couldn't find Fairfax. He was following something up on his credit card case instead. I mean, he should be back right now. Yeah, well, maybe he's been delayed. When he does put in an appearance, can you point him in my direction? Yes, sir. I've just had news from the station officer. They found an IC1 female. Bradley Bond. You got any idea who it is? We can't be certain at this stage. This way. Look, the one who's taken out. What ambulance is she in? I'm sorry, I don't know. Andrea, I'm not here right now, so you know what to do. Andrea, it's me. If you're in, open the door. Come on. Look, uh, I'm sorry I was out of order, you know. Um, or well, more than that, I was an idiot. So wound up about the job, I nearly forgot what was important. So uh, I've made a decision. I. Um, well, I don't deserve this, but I want a second chance. I know we can make it work. Anyway, I'm not going to go anywhere until we sort it out. So, um...
Well, according to the duty states, both Ken and Neil were out of the station. Oh, and Ken couldn't get hold of Colin, so he was following up an investigation on the credit card fraud. But Jim reckons he should have been back by now. We've tried the mobile, nothing. What about Neil? Well, Samantha said he was out on personal business. Did he ask for one from 595? Go ahead, Tony. What have you got for me? Look, you must have got a name. Something. Sorry. Roger. Do you know what they dragged out? Oh, afraid not. Inspector Gold's asked Tony to find out. We're not going to need these two anymore. They'll be moving out any minute. Oh, okay. Gabriel! Gabriel! What do you think you're playing at? Might be others trapped inside. Leave it to the fire crew. But we can't just let them die. Look, I know what you did for Smithy. This is not our job. Leave it to the professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, particularly Sunhill operational staff. We have just found out that the woman who was taken to St. Hughes was Marilyn Chambers. As far as we can tell, there are only two people who still remain unaccounted for. Ken Drummond and Neil Manson. Locating them is of paramount importance. The fire is now under control. However, we're waiting to see if the building is structurally safe. We now know that a delivery van loaded with some kind of accelerant was driven into the front office. Witness statements suggest we're looking for a single assailant. What isn't yet clear is the motive behind the attack. From now on, Sun Hill must be treated as a crime scene. I need a handful of officers to police the security cordon. The rest of you remain here for a debrief. I'll keep you informed. Maggie. Can't believe I did that. My whole body just froze. It doesn't matter. You're here and you're safe. Would you like a cup of tea? I um I wanted to thank you. You know, for helping me out like that. I think you just needed a bit of encouragement, that's all. <laughs> it was more than that. I've made a real fool of myself. Oh nonsense now, come on. You had a panic attack. Anyone can have them, especially under those circumstances. I'll get you some tea. Thanks, Sally. Has anyone talked to Reg? I've tried his mobile. He's constantly engaged. No, I'll keep trying, because I've just heard from the hospital and Marilyn's asking for him. Well, she's OK, then. Well, she's regained consciousness, but she's not out of the woods yet. No. Is this all we got from custody? No, no, no there's got to be more. I'm going to get back and check. Good. Did you try Ken's mobile again? Well, it keeps going straight to voicemail. Did anyone actually see Ken return to Sun Hill? Listen, I spoke to him at about 3.30. He'd given up on Fairfax and was heading over to see someone about this fraud investigation. Yeah, but what about after that? No, I don't remember him going back to CID. Listen, he's going to be all right. He's probably just stuffing his face on it. Mm. Let's hope you're right. Any news on our escape prisoners? No sightings as yet. Barton Street's been informed. Jim's checking their home address. Right. We've got this witness who's in the front office when the van hit and he's been given it all clear by the medical staff. He needs interviewing. Right. Philip, I need you to talk to the local residents, shopkeepers, whoever. Find out who saw what when the explosion happened, all right? Mum, what about the CCTV cameras at the station? No, it's going to take a while before we can access it. There's a couple of places in Sunhill Road. They've got security cameras. See if you can find the tapes. Yeah, I'm on to you. What kind of person would do something like this? Who else uses these kind of guerrilla tactics? Terrorists. I wouldn't have thought Sunhill would have been high on a terrorist hit list. It's not the neck, it's what it stands for. What do you mean? Well, maybe Colin was right. Maybe there's a connection between this and our Asian prisoners. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was bang out of order. But maybe underneath that bile, he was onto something. Like what? Well, what if the explosion was connected to their escape plan? Think about it. The device goes off and our Muslim prisoners are brought out of custody and lo and behold, two of them make their escape. What's their religion got to do with anything? I was just offering an opinion. I think you're jumping to the same racist conclusions Colin did.
Oh, Marilyn. It's Reg. Again. It's, uh, it's 22 now. I'm going to take this as a no-show. I'm heading back to Sunnyhill now. But hopefully, I'll see you there. Marilyn, it's Tony. We're trying to get hold of Reg. He'll be here very soon. Just hang on in there. Let some people go get a bed bath of a pretty nurse. How are you doing? I'll live. Well, it's just as well you only banged your head. Anywhere else you might have done some permanent damage. Huh. <coughs> How is everyone? Poor Marilyn's in a bad way. Who would do this? Depends who you're talking to. I've heard everything from terrorists to the ghosts of Test Havana. What about Ken? Ken, I don't even think he was in the station. Yeah. He was in the back of the van. Ken was in the van? Yeah. How? Why? I don't know. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They haven't been back. Look, it wasn't anyone's fault, Jill. Mark, is everything all right? They found the remains of the body. Who? We don't know yet, but the superintendent's been asked to perform the ID. Gina, it's Tony. Go ahead, Tony. I've just spoken to Smithy. He said that Ken was in the back of the van just before the explosion. What? The yeah, I know, it's crazy. What was he doing in the back of a van? He didn't say. He doesn't know. All right, thanks, Tony. I don't understand it. What was Ken doing in the back of a van? What's that? Have you seen Marilyn? What? Well, Marilyn, have you seen her? I... I don't know, Rach. Um, uh, she was taken. She Jim, was... can you give me a straight answer? Have you seen Marilyn or not? They've taken her out, Rach. You sure? I don't know. They've taken her to St Hughes. Hello, Rach. Where is she? In recess. But is she all right? Well, the doctors are just finishing their tests. But I'll take you through. I think I should call her mother. She said no. I can do that, Rich. No, but the thing is, she works shifts, you see. No, just like, I'll sort it. The important thing is you're with Marilyn. Marilyn. It's Reg, now. Everything's going to be all right now. I'm here. I just can't understand what Ken was doing in that van. Doesn't make sense. I keep expecting him to walk through the door in one of his loud shirts. We know the van came from the direction of Canley High Street. All right, the quality's a bit patchy, but I reckon Barrett Street can get an index from it, so I'm going to just go over there right now. Well, maybe after we've spoken to Jim, it'll all be clearer. He did work with Ken on the case. Look, I appreciate your concerns, but this is now a murder investigation. It's up to MIT to deal. Any information we have needs to be handed to them. Sir. Sir. Sure. Look, just because MIT are dealing, it doesn't mean we won't keep a close eye on this thing. Jim. 
You okay? All I feel at the moment is normal. Yeah. I'm not sure today I'll ever sink in. Look, I know it's a cliche, but life's too short and it's a shame it takes something like this to make you realise. Jim, I'm sorry, I've got all this to deal with. All I'm saying is it makes you appreciate what you've got. Look, I really can't get my head round anything at the moment. We've found the stolen area car, dumped outside an Indian restaurant, uh, Bangla Bites. Ring any bells? Yeah, um, Fazal Chowdhury, he's the training manager at the restaurant. He was our informant on the credit card gang. Well, presumably you protected his identity. Oh, yeah. But it wouldn't have taken them long to work out who grasped them up. Sierra Oscar 1 from 437. Go ahead, Leela. Mum, we've just received reports of two suspects matching Najib and Ali's description entering a chemist on Pickett Street. Received. What are you waiting for? Mum, I don't think I'm up to this. Look, normally I wouldn't dream of asking. You know, this Faz could be in serious trouble, and you're the only one in any position that can help him. This was Ken's investigation, wasn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't want all his hard work to go for nothing, would you? Come no, on. No, no. Check the footage from the security camera. It's definitely Ali and Najib. What happened? They burst in here about ten minutes ago and went straight for an assistant, Rashida Kadir. Rashida? Do you know her? Her fiancé was the informant on the credit card raid, Faz Chowdhury. They couldn't find him at the restaurant, so they must have come looking for her. She never mentioned anyone called Faz. Apparently Ali and Najib just demanded the keys to the morphine cabinet. She's lying. Well, maybe we should go a bit easy on her. Apparently the younger brother gave her a right shiner and she's pretty shook up. Well, if you want to pussyfoot your around, that's your choice. I just want this over and done with as quickly as possible. Rashida? Yes? I'm DC Jim Carver. Look, I know you spoke to my colleague earlier, but I need to know exactly what happened. I was changing around the front display. They just burst in, started shouting. They grabbed me by the hair and dragged me into the back office. Do you know Faz Chowdhury? He's the training manager at the Bangla Bites restaurant. No. Rashida, I could check, but I think we both know what I would come up with. He's your boyfriend, isn't he? These men are part of an organised gang. Faz is a good man. We know he's part of a credit card cloning operation. He was helping us with our inquiries. I tried to ring him, but he never switches his phone on. Where is he? Visiting his father. Myatt Street, number 28. That's what the two men wanted to know. Yes. Please find him before they hurt him. Don't worry. I'm going to propose to Marilyn today. I'm not sure how it's going to go down, though. I'm sure she'd jump at the chance, Rich. I'm not so sure. Well, it's going to be postponed now anyway, isn't it? Until she gets back on her feet. I mean, they can do all sorts now, can't they? That is the wonder of modern medicine. All sorts of new procedures being discovered all the time. You sure you're okay to deal with this? Yes. Okay, count them all and get back to me. ASAP. Sir. What's happened? Someone drove a van into the front office that was loaded with petrol. We've got the index number. We're trying to trace the owner. I saw MIT. Were there many casualties? Ken's body was discovered earlier. Marilyn Chambers is in a bad way. No one else missing? Not now that you've turned up. Who's responsible? We're not sure. Even bigger mystery? According to witness statements, Ken was in the back of the van. What? He and Jim were working on this Asian credit card gang. I can only think the two things were connected. For now, MIT have assumed primacy, but as it's on our patch, I think we can lend a hand in a supportive way. Yeah, I agree. I've got to get over to Barton Street. All operations are being rehoused there until Sun Hill's up and running. Sir. I've bought a table for tonight. Nice little Italian place. 
it's a bit on the pricey side, but well, it's a special occasion, isn't it? Now, do you think I should call him and let them know we can make it? Rich. You heard what the doctor said, mate. Well, Marilyn will be disappointed. You like a nice Italian, don't you? Uh, Rich, there's a chance that Marilyn... Look, I'm looking forward to the little things. Being man and wife. Doing up the garden. Staying up late nights, watching black and white films. There's a chance that that... Listening to her singing in the shower. And then watching her dry her hair in the mirror. Rich, listen to me. Listen to me. There's a chance that Marilyn won't make it. I know that. I heard. But what am I supposed to do? She's the love of my life. I can't just let her go. I thought... Yeah, all right, Tony. I need to spend some more time with Marilyn now. Well, could you put me through, please? Detective Inspector Manson, Sunhill. Okay. I can't believe Ken's gone. I don't envy the person who's got to break it to his family. How'd you get over news like that? Just goes to show you've got to make the most of it while you can. Yeah. What time did I get back? A few minutes ago. Okay, well I understand, but if you do hear from her, I'd appreciate if you could give me a call. Thank you. That was the newspaper. They want to know what time Andrea Dunbar left the station. Apparently she's missed an appointment. I don't recall seeing her, sir. Last I heard, Smithy escorted her out of the building. So she's definitely left the building? Well, you'd need to clear that with Smithy first. Well, where is he? Got us news, sir. Yeah, he got trapped in the building. If it weren't for Gabriel, he'd still be in there. You don't think Andrew's in there? I don't know. I need to check on someone. Mate, I understand that you're worried about her, OK? The fire department, they've been all over that building. Now, if Andrew was in there, they would have found her by now. You know that for a fact, Phil. Managed to get hold of Marilyn's mum. Uh, well, yeah, eventually, yeah. She'd gone out into town. How'd she take it? Sorry, stupid question. She said she's going straight to Lime Street Station, get the first train here. Hopefully, Marilyn will be awake by the time she gets here. Reg, the doctor said. Yeah, I know that they're doing all they can, but look, I'd better get back in there in case I can help. You can get off now, thanks. I'd rather stay. No, it's all right. Look, when Marilyn does wake up, she's not going to want a load of people hanging around. And when that does happen, I'll call you. Ambulance and urgent assistance required at 28 Myatt Street, over. Or Come on, this ain't doing any good. What do you make me do? You make me hurt my own brother. No, I'm gonna Nash. hurt you. Nash, don't do anything stupid. Look, Faz, it's your mate, a cop. No, that's not true. No, I never grasped you up, I swear. Oh, don't treat me stupid. Those lot do their commando raids. And he's the only face I don't see. Don't make this any worse, Nats. Madge, your brother needs your help. She can help him. You shouldn't have got in the way, bruv. You shouldn't have tried to stop me. He needs a doctor. Ali? Ali? What do I do, Ali? Drop the knife. Madge, put the knife down. Ah... Uh. The knife down. Get off the floor! Oh, is this what you wanted, eh, Natch? To trade your brother so you could get your revenge? You can't treat me like this. I know my rights. I suggest you shut up and cooperate. Back off me, man, or I'll report you. All right, stand up! All right, don't you shut up now. What's your problem? Oh, my problem. My problem is, a good friend of mine, a very decent man, died in that fire today. And I should be back at the station helping out instead of dealing with little scum like you. Look on the bright side. It's one less copper to worry about. Ignore him, Jim. He's not worth it. 
His name was Ken. Now I want you to apologize. You crazy man. I think you must have breathed in too much smoke. Apologize. Don't let him get to you, Jim. Someone having a barbecue? Only, I think they forgot to take the bacon off. <laughs> So, right, you were in the CID office at about four o'clock, yeah? That's right. I was emptying the bins and that's when I heard the explosion. And what happened then? I went into the corridor, but um, it was full of smoke and that's when Ramani Diaz da Costa pulled me away. And had you noticed anything at all suspicious before that? No, it, it was just a normal day. Yeah. Um, is, is there something else? I, no, no, sorry. Um, I, I, I mean, are you all right? <laughs> More or less. You might as well go home. Thank you. I've just spoken to the custody sergeant at Barton Street, and he's still waiting for the prisoner's belongings. Oh, no, I'm... Oh. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's all right. I'll get a PC to drop them off. In the meantime, why don't you take a break? Come on, it's been a horrible, horrible day. Thanks. He was a cocky little fuck who was mouthing off about Ken. Someone had to teach him a lesson. And that's down to you, is it? Well, why not? You know, you're not the only one that has lost someone close today. But if everybody else can muster some dignity, I don't see why you can't. He had it coming to him. This is about Ken. Stop kidding yourself. This is all about Jim Carver. Oh, is that a fact? You want to take a long, hard look at yourself? What do you know about him? What do you know about me? I've been with Ridge. There's a chance he could lose Marilyn. Then there's you. You've got everything and you're still not satisfied. Change the record, Tony. You've always been the same, Jim. Whenever you get something in your hands that's good, you destroy it. Do you ever listen to yourself? <laughs> you actually believe that sanctimonious crap, don't you? At least I don't go around behaving like a prize prat. Oh, no, you're too busy being Tony Stamp, everybody's favourite uncle. And you're too busy being Jim Carver, the self-obsessed failure. You really are unbelievable. It's not surprising that June turned to someone else for comfort. I shouldn't have said it. Don't mess me around, Tony. This is my marriage we're talking about. Is my wife having an affair? It was a misunderstanding. You got hold of the wrong end of the stick, that's all. I thought you were my friend. I am. Then tell me the truth. It's not my place. If you've got problems with your marriage, it's your wife that you should be talking to. Right. Listen to me. You can't go steaming in there like this. Otherwise, you will kiss your marriage goodbye. Now, just calm down and talk to her about it in the morning, all right? If you're any kind of friend, then you would have said something the minute you knew that something was going on. Jim, get out of my way, Tony. Get out of my way! Smithy. Uh, are you up to a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. You were supposed to be escorting Andrea out of the building, remember? Yeah, that's what the, uh, that's what the superintendent wanted. He, um, he wanted me to make sure that Andrea 
collected her belongings and then left the premises. What happened? Um, she wanted to get something out of, out of a pigeonhole and I got called away. And when I came back, she's gone. So you don't know for sure whether she left the building? Uh, no, I, I, I just assumed that she'd gone home. Gov. I know you'd probably rather be on your own, but who can resist a cup of Colombians finest? Okay, it's a cup of cheap instant. Best I can do under the circumstances. Thank you. Are you okay? I take it you witnessed my little performance in the hall. I really should keep my emotions in check. Don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, but I am supposed to be a sergeant. What, because you reveal a little bit of vulnerability, you think everyone's going to think less of you? Well, I'm sorry, but you don't see the super running out of the room in tears. Well, maybe, but that just proves you're not a robot. No. It means I'm an over-emotional woman who can't cope in a crisis. That's rubbish. Everyone knows you're a great sergeant. Just proves that this is more than just a job. You know, and that you actually care about your colleagues. I can guarantee that means more to them than anything else. Drink your coffee before it gets cold. I'm going to see if I can find where they keep their biscuits. We've got a problem. Smith isn't sure that Andrea left the building. She might still have been in there when the explosion took place. Are you sure? He said she could have been anywhere along the front corridor. I'm going to check there by now. Well, the roof collapsed. The engineer's trying to make it safe. We've got to do something, Mom. Well, have you tried to bring her at home? Yeah, on the mobile, there's, uh, there's nothing. Well, I'm reading the newspaper, see if she's turned up there. I've already done that, Mom. They said that she's missed an appointment. Right, well, let's not get this out of all proportion. You know, I'll speak to the station officer, and if it's clear, he can do a recce and put all our minds at rest, all right? You saw? It's just whenever I get stressed, it goes straight to my neck, just here. Well, you're in luck. I'm fully versed in the art of therapeutic massage, guaranteed to relieve the stresses and strains of the day. It'll help you relax. There's no harm in it. Yeah, well, no, I'm not sure. It's only a massage. Now, according to ancient Chinese science, oh. the body has four main areas where stress collects. Is that a fact? Yeah, the secret is to locate each of these areas and treat them one at a time. Uh, oh, oh, actually, that's very good. So, yeah. Uh, the tension disappears. <laughs> Tell me, where did you become such an authority on all this? Well, I'll let you into a little secret. Mm -hmm. I made the whole thing up. <laughs> Sure, it's her. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have to inform the relief. Oh. You two, get to the rendezvous point. The uh, super's about to do his debrief. Oh. I just wanted to say. You heard the inspector, Phil. You go to the um, rendezvous. gives a rousing speech about fighting back. Yeah, we'll just point me in the right direction. We'll be told to pick ourselves up, carry on. That's what Ken would have wanted. What's the bloody point? 
We've got to carry on, though. It's like we've been given a second chance. Today's how we put things into perspective. And I'm a good copper. I just needed a chance to prove it to myself. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Smithy owes you a few pints. Sir. This is the end of a traumatic day. We've lost a good friend, Ken Drummond. By all accounts, Ken died following a selfless and heroic act. Another friend of ours, Marilyn Chambers, lies critically ill in hospital. Andrea Dunbar was also killed in the fire. And regardless of what we think of her deception, I'm sure we all sense the tragedy of her loss. Putting ourselves in harm's way has always been a condition of this job. But that doesn't make our loss any more bearable. The best way that we can honor their memories is by continuing with our endeavors. Until further notice, all Sun Hill operational staff will parade at Barton Street. For now, our thoughts are with those who we've lost and those who die injured. I was going to ask you to marry me today. But I was sure you'd say no. Either that or burst out laughing. I tried this on today, in a jeweler shop. On my little finger. I know it's not very scientific, but... I hope it fits. Marilyn? Marilyn? Can someone? She's arrested. Can someone else? so much better, I can't tell you. Listen, uh, thank you for listening to me. I'm sorry I've been such a pain. Oh, there's no need to apologise. Any time you need me, I'm here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, no. Jim. with that will not get it back. You prefer to punish me by screwing Roger. The only time I stop hating you is when I'm with him. Calm Roger, down. please stay out of this. Oh. 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 Come on.